All right, let's look at section 1.5. In this section, we're talking about things that we do all the time. And it's called rounding and estimating. Now, the thing about rounding and estimating, and you need to understand why we use this, is that this is useful. It's useful for getting a general idea. Um, it's useful for getting the general idea about the magnitude of a certain number or quantity. There is definitely room for precision when we talk about numbers. And I will ask you to be precise. But sometimes you can round a number to give a good estimation. And it's not really going to mess with the end result of what you're trying to communicate to somebody. Because in mathematics, there is a lot about communication. Now, let me give you an example. If we talk about the current enrollment in Cypher ISD, The current enrollment is this number. Now, of course, we talked about how we can accurately read this number. We would read it how? 111,348. Now, if you were talking to your friend on the phone and you were trying to talk about what is the enrollment of Cypher ISD, are you going to say, it's, uh, it's uh, 111,348? You might round. Well, I don't think I'd say eleven hundred thousand. You might say one hundred eleven thousand. Oh no, that's what you just said. No, you said you said something backwards. You might say one hundred eleven thousand. You might say this is approximately maybe. You might say one hundred ten thousand, right? Haven't you ever rounded like that? No, you, you wouldn't round like that? Uh, round up to what? 120,000? 112. 112? No, you go to 111. It depends where you're rounding up. You know, yeah, it, it depends on the spot where I'm rounding. Oh, I, know. It, I decided to round to the 10,000 spot. Because if I do 110,000, that's not, it's only missing 1,348 students. So it's close enough that I can still communicate the idea about how large the enrollment is at Cypher ISD, right? Mm -hmm. If I had run it to the nearest thousand, I could have said 111,000. Because in terms of the nearest thousand, is this number right here closer to 111,000 or 112,000? It's closer to 111,000. Now, some people may even round this further and say, Cypher IC has an, has an enrollment of about 100,000. Now, what if this number were 140,000? Would you still say it's about 100,000? Yeah. Well, it depends on where you're rounding to. But again, when we round, if it doesn't say specifically where to round, we're talking about things that we talk about on a normal, everyday basis, you might round in a place that sounds is most appropriate where you're not really losing a lot of information. If I round here, I'm doing a pretty good job of rounding and I'm not losing a lot of information, as opposed to me rounding to the nearest 100,000. If I round to the nearest 100,000, it is just 100,000. But you lose off, you, you lose 11,000 in the count, right? And percentage-wise, that's a fairly significant number. Uh, what if we talk about the the population of Texas. Population of Texas is, according to the 2010 census, 26,059,203. If someone was asking you what is the population of Texas, what do you think would be an, a nice appropriate way to round this to still convey the meaning of the size of Texas? You would probably say this is about 26 million, right? 
You rounded to the nearest what in this case? You rounded to the nearest million, didn't you? If you were to round to the nearest 10 million, see the two is in the 10 million spot, right? If you round into the nearest 10 million, is this closer to 20 million or 30 million? 30 million. But I'm not really sure I feel how uh, I'm okay with the accuracy of that number. I feel like 26 million is much more accurate than the 30 million if I'm rounding. Wouldn't you agree? Even if you don't agree, just nod your head and agree with me. That's probably good. Now here's a fun one. Kobe Bryant's 2013-2014 NBA salary. Because he is the highest paid basketball player right now in terms of salary. His salary is this guy. Thirty million four hundred fifty-three thousand eight hundred five dollars. But if you were talking with your friend at the water cooler, man, can you believe that Kobe Bryant makes about how much? You'd say he makes about thirty million dollars, right? Is it exact? Is it one hundred percent accurate? No, but does it still convey the size of his salary? Yeah. Yes. It's a good estimate, right? So you do this all the time, don't you? If you go and you put gas in your car, how much did you spend? Well, I spent $56.43. <laughs> you might say, I spent about $56. Or you may say, I spent almost $60. And of course, you probably never make that <laughs> sound, do you? No, that's usually for people like me. You have to have glasses to do that. It usually helps. You gotta push them up when you do it. <laughs> so question. Yes, question. Rounding. Mm -hmm. The first top line was rounding was moving in the top four position. It depends. It depends. You're trying to go to the closest number based on whatever position, whatever place value I want to round to. If I want to round to the nearest hundred versus the nearest thousand. Those rounding numbers may be a little bit different. Now here, I was just rounding and estimating like we normally do in our normal conversations, okay? Let's talk about how we would actually round, because the problems in the text will say round to a specific place value, round to the nearest hundred. Okay, so how do we do that? Um, the way we do that is to First, locate the place value, locate the, the digit, the place value to which we are to round. So if I say round to the nearest hundreds, you find the hundreds digit in your number. And then what you do is that you look Look at the digit, look at the number, immediately to the right. Look at the digit that's immediately to the right. If the number is five or more, you do what we call rounding up. And you do that by adding one to the number that we're trying to round to. But what if the number is four or less? Round down. We, we say round down, um, but we, we don't change anything. So we don't change anything. And then once we've rounded up or rounded down, so we say, then all numbers to the right, all numbers to the right of the indicated place value, all numbers to the right of the indicated place value become zero.
So these are the steps, but I think a lot of us have an idea about how we're going to do this anyway. Uh, we're just going to look at a few numbers. I'm going to ask you to round to different places. If I were to say this, we're going to take the number 45,072 and we'll round this to the nearest. What if I round to the nearest 100? Okay. Where's your 100 spot in this number? The zero is the 100 spot, right? Look at the number immediately to the right. Is it 5 or greater or is it 4 or less? It's 5 or greater, so that means I'm going to round up by adding 1. That means this is the number I'm concerned with right here, the 0. I'm going to add 1 to that. So when I add 1, this becomes 45,001. And then I turn everything else behind it into zeros. Right? If I were to round to the nearest 10,000, where's the 10,000 spot in this number, in the original number? Isn't this the 10,000 spot right here? So that's my 10,000 spot. What's immediately after that? Five or greater, so I would do what? Keep it. I would add one to this. I would round up, right? And by adding one to that, it becomes a five. And what do you do with all the numbers after it? You turn them into zeros. Turn them into zeros. Right? So to the nearest hundred, here's my hundreds. I've got zero. So if I look at just this part right here, is this closer to no hundreds or closer to 100? It's closer to the 100, right? If I look at this in terms of 10,000s, is this number closer to 40,000 or closer to 50,000? It's closer to 50,000. If the number ends up being like halfway in the middle, like that five, we're going to be, that's where we start to round up. Other questions about what I have for these problems? Okay. Now, there are more examples to follow in the book, and we're going to also use rounding and estimating to give us an idea about what our final answer should be when we're dealing with, say, larger numbers. If you know an idea about what your answer should equal, then when you're doing it for real and getting an exact answer, it should be close enough to that to make sense.